the lady from Wyoming, Ms. Cheney, and an opponent or their respective designees. The gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Thompson, the gentlewoman from Ms. Cheney, and the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Banks, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Mississippi. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include any extraneous material on this measure. Without objection, so ordered. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Madam Speaker, since Speaker Pelosi asked me to chair the January 6th Select Committee, I spent a lot of time thinking about the importance of what we are doing, the weight of it, the urgency. We need to give the American people answers about what happened. There needs to be swift accountability. But there are longer term considerations too, Madam Speaker. I'm a grandfather, and when I talk to my grandkids about that horrific attack on our democracy on January 6th, my mind jumps ahead to the future in store for them. Questions about whether American democracy, as we know it now, will remain strong, whether it will withstand future tests. That's got to be the legacy of this committee's work. To be sure, we're going to answer questions about what happened on that day. But we also need to draw a road map for making sure our democracy remains strong tomorrow. We will work backward at what happened and try to explain how and why the insurrection came about. But we'll also look forward and generate recommendations for legislative policy and process changes that will help ensure that nothing like this ever happens again. And when we get to the end of this process and look back, we're going to ask ourselves, did we do everything in our power to undercover every fact? Did, did we use the tools at our disposal to get a full accounting? Or did we let someone stand in our way without facing consequences? Did we learn what we needed to know for Congress to forge legislation to help ensure we never experience another January 6th again. That's why we are taking up this resolution today, citing Steve Bannon with criminal contempt and referring him for prosecution by the Justice Department. We didn't choose to be here. This isn't about punishing Steve Bannon. The Select Committee would prefer and frankly expect all witnesses to fully cooperate. But Steve Bannon has led us down this path by refusing to cooperate in any way with our investigation. We believe Mr. Bannon has information valuable to our probe. He was deeply involved in the so-called Stop the Steal campaign. He was reportedly in a war room meeting the day before the riot and had been pressuring the former president to try to stop the counting of the electoral college ballots. He himself warned that all hell would break loose on January 6th. We believe he can help inform our inquiry as to how the riot came together and what it was intended to achieve. He's clearly an important witness. So we subpoenaed him, and unlike other witnesses who have engaged and worked with our team to find a way to cooperate, Mr. Bannon told us he wouldn't comply because the former president told him not to. He hid behind vague and baseless claims of privilege. That's just not acceptable. The select committee told Mr. Bannon several times that he would face the consequences if he didn't change course. Well, he didn't change course, and his actions have brought us to this point. Madam Speaker, we need to make it clear that no person is above the law. We need to make, take a stand for the integrity of the Select Committee's investigation and for the integrity of this body. What sort of precedent would it set for the House of Representatives if we allow a witness to ignore us flat out without facing any kind of consequences? What message would it send to other witnesses in our investigation? I'm not willing to find out. 
I'm not willing to get to the end of the select committee's work and look back wishing we had done more to uncover all the facts, not when we know what's on the line, when we know that our democracy isn't yet out of danger, when we know that the forces that tried to overturn the election persist in their assault on the rule of law. Our investigation is going forward. We're hearing from witnesses, reviewing documents, analyzing data. Mr. Bannon stands alone in his defiance, and we will not stand for it. We will not allow anyone to derail our work because our work is too important. Helping ensure that the future of American democracy is strong and, sure and secure. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlelady from Wyoming. Madam Speaker, 